Well, guys, in this uh, module, we're going to talk about finance. And anytime you want to talk about finance, you start with simple interest because all financial formulas have the simple interest as the root. So let's start with simple interest. So right here you can see the definition of simple interest. It's actually used mostly on short-term notes or loans. And with simple interest, your interest is paid or earned only on the principal invested. In other words, any interest you earn does not earn any interest. If, if interest earned interest, that would be compound interest, which we'll see in the next section. So you can actually think of simple interest as one long period over the entire length of the investment or loan. So let's talk about how, how it works. If you deposit or borrow a sum of money, then P is referred to as the principal. Now P can also be called the present value. If you borrow or deposit money in an account, someone has made an investment. So regardless of whether you borrow money or deposit money, um, someone's made an investment. So if you borrow, then someone made an investment in you, hoping that they get a return that involves the uh, original investment plus any interest. But if you deposit or loan somebody money, then you made an investment in someone else or some institution and then you expect to get a good return for your money. For this reason, I will at times refer to borrowing or depositing money simply as an investment. Now, when this investment is transacted, there's a fee charge. The fee is called interest, and we use the letter here I generally for interest. Now, the interest is based on three variables. P, which is the principal, that's the amount you, that's invested, R, which is the annual rate, but one thing important, R, when you put it in formulas, must always be written in decimal form. And then T is the time, and what's important about time is time always has to be converted to years. So always make sure you convert your time to years when you're dealing with simple interest. And then, of course, as I've already said, I represents the interest. So let me just show you a couple things here. If you had 7%, uh, if you put it in a formula, you would write it as 0.07. If you had 3.25%, you would write that in the formula as 0.0325. And if you had 0.1%, which is possible to have a decimal percent, you would actually write that as 0.001. Now, as far as the time goes, if you had 30 months, you would actually divide 30 by 12 to convert that to 2.5 years. But if you had 35 months, 35 doesn't divide by 12 very nicely, so I would just leave that as 35 divided by 12. Now, if you had 17 weeks, uh, 17, you would divide 17 by 52 to convert it to years. Now, if you had 26 weeks, you could just write that as 0.5, but 17 over 52, I'd just leave it as a fraction. And if you had 200 days, you would take the 200 days and divide it by 365 days to get the number of years. Sometimes it actually tells you in the problem to use 360 days, but don't do that unless the problem specifically says 360 days. And we'll skip leap years in these calculations. So, so we'll assume each year has 365 days. Okay, so we'll start with the formula for simple interest. So the formula for simple interest is interest is equal to principal times rate times time. And I've already told you what each of these variables represent. So let's go ahead and do a uh, problem. So number one here says find the interest on a used car loan of $5,000 at a rate of 16% for a period of eight months. Now the key here in, in knowing that this is a simple interest problem is if it was not a simple interest loan, then I would have said money was compounded. So I would have said that uh, money was compounded monthly or money is compounded daily or something like that. But here I didn't say compounding. So even though it doesn't say simple interest, we're going to assume simple interest since there's no mention of compounding. 
All right. Now, we're actually asked to find the interest. It asks us for the interest. So we know the principal is 5,000. We know the rate is 0.16 in decimal. And T for eight months would be 8 divided by 12 years, and we can reduce that to two-thirds. Okay, so then now that we know the principal, we know the rate, and we know the time in years, we can now just simply multiply these together. 5,000 times 0.16 times two-thirds on our calculator, and we get $533.33. Okay, here's another example. It says, find the interest earned on an investment of $10,000 into a money market account that pays a simple interest rate. Now, this time we did tell you simple interest of 1.75% over a 39-week period. So again, the principal that we're investing is $10,000. The rate in decimal would be 0 0.0175, and the time in years would be 39 weeks divided by 52 weeks in a year, which would give me 0.75 years. So then I would simply take the 10,000 principal times the rate 0 0.0175, and multiply that by 0.75 and I get that the interest is 131.25 and so that's how you find the interest when you have the principal the rate and the time given for simple interest and in the next video I'll show you how to calculate the amount with simple interest